Hey everyone, this is Bjorkman from Audio Issues. I wanted to give you a little Christmas present and let you in on the session I was doing. The session I was doing with the, my band, um, we recorded the drums for a bunch of different tracks. And this was originally a song called Sweet Carousel, but because it was Christmas time, I rewrote the lyrics and we made it a Christmas song instead, just for fun. But the original instrumentation is just uh, guitar, vocals, and drums. Um, and it sounds like that, just just with those two things, or just with those three things. It's kind of weird to show you that when it's all mixed with everything else. But let's do drums, vocals, and let's take the jingle bells off, and let's take the tambourine off, and uh, the acoustic guitar off. And that should sound a little bit something like this if we mute everything else. Christmas time going round and round Hearing those sleigh bells ring Going round and round And the children sing Everything is So that uh, is how we kind of play it live. It's played on an acoustic guitar that's an electric guitar there in the background but uh quite different than what we ended up with and it literally just became this big because i was just having fun with uh my little midi keyboard and checking out all the uh instruments software instruments that that logic has to offer and it just started with me playing around with the bells and um and then just going overboard from there uh, so it started with the bell uh intro here if it started with this riff and then it kind of became something much more after that so if we listen to the intro it's just the electric guitar and the uh and these bells which are uh made with the sculpture synth and the retro synth so it's a xylophone and then a bell more or less uh it says classic electric piano here because we that was the original patch. So let's listen to that intro real quick. So what you can hear here is this guitar. It is actually pretty processed. The guitar was recorded directly into my Apollo Twin, and uh, it's the sound you get is just from these plugins. I was looking for a really narrow sounding, kind of crystally electric guitar, and uh, I just use a seal on that as well as this EQ. So you see how it's uh, a little high pass filtered, low pass filtered, and then. I've taken out some of these for the uh, vocals and it was getting in the way of some of the strings and all that stuff. It's supposed to be a background instrument after everything else comes in anyway. So the sound here was more of a production decision rather than a mixing decision or anything like that. I was looking for that kind of crystally uh, icy sound. And then you just have these bells and this was just me playing around with the bell synth and then I doubled it with another different type of synth so you can hear how these guys come together this one just has that high energy or high feel and this one kind of doubles it on the lower lower scale So it just gives it that big sound, and uh, I thought it was fun, and it was very Christmassy to me. And then uh, I kind of just piled on some of the uh, some of the arrangements. I started with these bells, and then I put them in uh, on at various places. This this is the same motif that repeats itself between the verses, and then this is the chorus bell thing that comes in here.
and that sort of plays in between the vocals. So if you listen to the chorus fully, this is how it sounds. At Christmas time going round and round Hearing the sleigh bells ring Going round and round And the children sing Everything is well on Yeah, so and then uh, from the from the chorus onwards, I always want there to be additional interest and something more going on every time there's a new section or a new part. I don't want it to just to be a verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, and then all always the and the instruments are always the same. There needs to be something to keep the listener engaged. So here I just added uh, a brass section just to kind of fill out that break, fill out that intro motif, those solo lead lines. So when you hear that, you get a completely different sound and added character to the sound. On a Christmas Wide awake and knowing and then in the verse 3, actually, there's less going on in verse 3 than in verse 2, because in verse 2, we have cellos and violas. Just to have something else going on, uh, as opposed to the verse 1, which has really just the guitar. So you can hear the hear how it fills out, fills out the second verse. <laughs> So it's that little hunch in their minds at Christmas time going round and round, hearing the sleigh bells ring. Going round and round And the children sing Everything is well On a Christmas carousel So what you can hear in the chorus is that there's no strings in the chorus. There's just the bells coming again. They play this other part, but there's an additional acoustic guitar. And uh, there's also my harmony here. And then there's jingle bells and a tambourine loop from the drummer of Logic. So this is what that sounds like. So the jingle bells were just recorded in front of a condenser mic just for fun. Our, my singer just did it. And uh, we just used snippets of it every once in a while. It's very, very low in the mix, but it fills it out a little bit. I'm going round and round Hearing the sleigh bells ring, going round and round. Cool. So verse 3 has less going on, like I was saying before. Uh, verse 2 has these cellos and violas. Then I mix it up a little bit and bring out these French horns, which I really like the sound of, especially when they're sustained. So it's just like that. Wide awake and knowing, while outside it's snowing. You never know just what And then all the strings come in here It's that little hunch in their minds It's Christmas time going round and round Hearing the sleigh bells ring Going round and round And the children sing When everything ends well on a Christmas carousel Christmas carousel So you can hear how the chorus 2 is much bigger than chorus 1 because of the addition of the strings but also because there's more harmonies going on here. There in the chorus 1 there is only the two harmonies here the main harmony and no the main the main vocal and then my main harmony here but then in the second we have 
two additional harmonies, this one here and this one here. So let's hear that in isolation, and I try not to cringe as I listen to myself. It's Christmas time going round and round. Hearing the sleigh bells ring going round and round. And the children sing when everything is well on a Christmas carousel. Let's listen to the variance in between the two choruses here. It's that little hunch in their minds At Christmas time going round and round Hearing the sleigh bells ring going round and round Okay, and then with the additional two harmonies it sounds fuller and a little better. It's Christmas time going round and round Hearing the sleigh bells ring, going round and round, and the children sing, when everything is well, on a Christmas carousel. really like this, how uh, it kind of becomes a call and response here by all the harmonies dropping out before the last phrase of the chorus. So, in total, that just sounds like this with everything else. It's Christmas time going round and round Hearing the sleigh bells ring going round and round And the children sing when everything Yeah, so, uh, so then it uh, kind of drops down in energy again All the strings go away, the brass is still here And then because there is kind of a refrain in the vocal section here where we all harmonize the carousel part again. So let's listen to that. Christmas carousel. And then just to add a little touch extra stuff here between the uh, the choruses, I add this piccolo part, which I just really like the sound of. A little hunch, a little hunch, a little hunch in their minds. A little hunch, a little hunch. So you can hear this new bell part here is playing in between all the uh, vocal parts. And nothing else is new, I guess. No. Nope. Jingle bells have dropped off completely. The tambourine is still going because it keeps the rhythm pretty tight. And then we go into the grand finale here, starting with the cellos. Um, and then it's doubled. A lot of these lines are actually doubles and then copied and then transposed up an octave or down an octave depending on the the register of the actual instrument and then it goes into where in the end of the uh, chorus all almost all of the instruments do the intro motif that lead line so let's listen to that all the way to the end and then we'll talk about the mix it's that little hunch in their minds it's Christmas Time going round and round Hearing the sleigh bells ring Going round and round And the children sing Everything is well On a Christmas carousel Christmas carousel
so that's it you can hear the uh, the piccolo part and uh, these bells are playing actually they're playing the chorus part while everybody else is playing the the other part this kind of gives it a different different feel and a nice outro uh, kind of a nice lazy outro because I just copied it over from the uh, from the uh, chorus and it ha just so happens that it's just a four chord um, song so everything really works in whatever part I want to put in it so there's a f there's a few different chords in the uh, in the end of the chorus but overall it's just uh, <laughs> C G A minor and uh, F the most commonly used pro chord progression in the world but it is what it is and I kind of like the song anyway so it doesn't matter <laughs> um, let's go check out the mix so what I did um, I kind of did a static mix first and then I used the top down approach and then I went back to it and did like a little mastering job so in the beginning I really only had the Kramer tape and the Pro EQ just doing a little bit of uh, EQing here and then I grouped all the instruments together I did um, just levels on everything and then I grouped them together for, as drums and then instruments so drums has the drum kit that was recorded uh, in my living room with an XY over the kit and uh, one room mic one snare mic and one kick drum mic and then in addition this uh, the jingle bells and the percussion the tambourine loop gets routed here and then the instruments, this is, this is the bass, the acoustic guitar, and the electric guitar. I think that's it. Yeah, and then the vocals, all the vocals go here. And the orchestra, oh, this is the orchestra reverb. Uh, I'll talk about that later. And then the strings are actually over here because I'm automating them. And uh, the bells are on their own bus, and the brass is on its own bus. And then I spent... I tried to do uh, an exercise in making sure I was really getting the levels right. So I spent way more time than I usually do doing levels because there's so much going on. Everything needs to be kind of at a perfect level. Obviously, it's automated at the end just for little bits here and there. But I was really careful trying to get as the best levels as possible. So on the drums, I started just doing simple... EQs like this just notching out where I thought you know because it's a it's an overall drum kit uh, these were just where I thought uh, there were some frequencies that I wanted to dull down or something like that you notice it's all subtractive that's actually not on purpose uh, now that I come back to it maybe I should go back and and see if these are actually needed anymore because I've gone back and EQ'd some stuff over here but anyway uh, it's I always high pass everything at least at 32 hertz, mm, even the kick drum because there's really nothing else below there. And then I put an 1176 on here. That's just doing uh, a little bit of compression, uh, just an overall bus bus compression. Then I have the Kramer tape from Waves, which is really nice. I really like this plugin, and it's kind of just giving it a little juicy uh, crunch, or not crunch, but the juicy uh, tape sound saturation. And then I have uh, a little air EQ right here, just for the symbols and stuff. So if we want to listen back to, let's just listen back to the uh, the final chorus here, and then we can. So you can hear there's just slight variations every time I unbypass the things. Uh, I'm trying to do a very subtle mixing here. The drums are definitely not the focal point of this song. It's always really just in the background. The kick drum is is more of a of a lead instrument of the drum kit than anything else. He's just using it as accents. He's not actually using the kick drum as like the main four on the floor beat type deal. So um, I'll 
go back to the kick drum later because that was pretty hard to mix. But uh, the reverb here, uh, let's go where that bus two here. So I'm using the Universal Audio EMT 140, which I got for free with uh, the Apollo Twin because of their uh, Christmas special. Uh, I looked around for a lot of reverbs. I was just kind of pulling knobs and, and screwing around with it until I found something that I kind of liked. I feel like this was a preset at one point, but I think as soon as I changed something, uh, it did something new. Uh, so this this is just me tweaking the plugin that I've really never used before, but uh, I think it sounds pretty good. Gives that kind of far away feel. I kind of want the sound to be pretty pretty big, and this is probably the most amount of reverb I've used in a song in a really long time because there's a lot of different reverbs going on, especially because of the presets that come with the uh, software patches. So that's the drums um, on the bus side, at least. And then I did just minor EQing on the uh, on the overheads. You know, just something like this, just high passing it a little bit, cutting out the muddiness, adding some, you know, some top, some bite to the uh, to the snare. Same here. Um, the snare I used the LA two way. I really like the LA two way, even to just put it on and have it like tickle the compression here, because the uh, the analog circuitry they're trying to model after is really sounds really good. So even just putting it on and having it do absolutely nothing can sweeten up your sound. Barely touching one here. Still feel like gives it some some act, extra oomph there. And the uh, snare is just high passed and just a little bit of body because he's playing with brushes. It's hard to get that thickness out of the snare. So, but I'm also accenting a little bit of the actual snares. The kick drum was hard because when we recorded it, we tried a bunch of different miking techniques, and I really liked this one because it was r really round and almost dull. But I thought this is kind of cool. I'm, I'll I'll be able to work with this. But in fact, it doesn't have that high end, that middle, mid frequencies that I need to get it to cut through. So I had to do a lot of different things just to, uh, just to get it to sound, um, decent. So what I did here is I have a bunch of different plugins here. This is just the normal EQ curve, high pass filtered, low pass filtered, trying to get as much out of the, uh, beater as I can and cutting out some of the boxiness here. I thought it was pretty boomy and pretty like rumbly so I was doing a little cuts over here and it kind of goes up to 120 or, or so, 150. Uh, not a lot. I'm not very drastic at the EQs. And then the uh, the next compressor is the, uh, the Renaissance compressor from Waves. It's just... Um, Compressing a little bit, ratio 4 to 1. Uh, let's just do this here so you can hear it. Um, there. So that's really boomy and low and with really no mid. So there's just a tiny more of the beater there. And then the compressor. You can hear my audio is a little out of sync, but I think that's probably just because I have so many plugins on. So it's going up to about three or even less. And then, then I use this one, which really, I really like this plugin to get tightness. Uh, I've used it on kick drum before and it's really nice. It kind of adds the, adds, um, it adds subs, but it also adds, uh, high frequency harmonics, I think. 
So let's listen to that. So you get that extra tightness. And then I was trying to add some more high end here for the beater. I'm not sure if I succeeded, but whatever. Because it really just accents the uh, snare drum. <laughs> So all in all, uh, I think that drums come out pretty well. They're pretty nice sounding. And then on the instruments, I just started uh, doing some minor bus comp uh, bus EQing on the instrument the whole track. I high pass filtered it only to about 50 hertz. Um, yeah, 50 hertz this could actually go a little lower because the bass because the bass is routed there. So let's do 40. And then uh, these are just frequencies that I, uh, let's just listen to it. A lot of these cuts are to make room for the vocal. Uh, this is probably to add a little extra presence to the, or body to the uh, guitars. And then I have a huge issue and phobia of boominess and muddiness. So these, this is what, where that comes from, it comes in. And then I have the LA-2A. Just constantly compressing around two, maybe going up until three. But I just really like the sound that it gives, and it kind of glues that instrument section together. And then at the end, we have the Kramer tape, which I really like using. And it has, and I'm doing the over here, which uh, adds a little, little distortion or a little analog tape warmth or whatever you want to call it. And then I had a reverb, but it doesn't go anywhere anymore because both of the electric guitar and the acoustic guitar have a reverb on the plugins themselves. So I'll we'll come back to that later. But um, the and I didn't want to put any reverb on the bass, so that's just how that is the bus here. And then the acoustic guitar sounds. <laughs> I have to say I'm not super happy with that acoustic guitar sound, but it was more like, uh, well, I'll just record it and we'll just put it in the background. Uh, and it does add a little extra to the background, and it's not a main instrument, so I'm not super worried about it. Uh, if we're going to do the actual sweet carousel version, then maybe I'll re-record it. But for now and for these purposes and being able to release it before Christmas, then this is just what I got. So what I have here is just... Um, I'm high pass filtering it quite a bit because I really just want that string clicky sound to cut through. I'm not necessarily looking for a big body of an instrument because there's a lot of other stuff going on. There's the other guitar, there are the strings, there's the bra brass, there's all this other stuff going on. And then just to get some effects, I just found a preset and tweaked it a little bit here uh, just to put some reverb on it. And uh, I like using the CLAs because they're kind of just a one-stop shop to to get a, the sound you want, easy easy production plugins. Um, I have I have written in the past that 
it's uh, dangerous to use these if you don't know what they're doing. But sometimes uh, just being quick and being uh, fast at mixing is uh, just a better just a better way to do it. And then that's it. Uh, there's a couple other plugins here that are actually not being used. So that's the acoustic guitar. So I guess it doesn't sound too bad, but it's just recorded you know, all by the desk. Uh, I just plugged in a mic and just threw it by the 12th fret and uh, went on. Went on with the production. So. Less bassy now with the uh, high pass filter. And then the CLA guitarist gives it a little extra sound here. And the electric bass just has an 1176. And I want it a smooth bass. Uh, no string sound or anything like that. So I'm very drastic in the filtering here. So let's listen to that with the bass. So I almost wanted it to sound kind of like a fretless bass that didn't have that didn't have any of that picky sound. And I I recorded the bass myself, and I'm not a bass player, so I played with a pick, which is uh, probably a no-no to a lot of bass players. But this is what I got, and this is what I wanted to do, so I just stuck with it. And that's why I filtered out all this stuff, just to kind of kill my pick sound and kill my fingers playing on the frets. So that's what we ended up with here. And then with the electric guitar as well. So this is the sound that the electric guitar made. So I just put it through the CLA. Like I was saying, I wanted a narrow sound that was kind of glassy, didn't have a lot of body or anything like that, so I filtered out quite a bit on both sides. And Okay, moving on. Um, I think I haven't forgotten anything yet. Then I actually, in the vocal section, I molted the vocals, which just means that I cut up the vocals. Um, so you can see here, the Liz versus vocals is a completely different track because I was processing it different. I actually ended up copying a lot of these processors on this vocal because then, because I was making this vocal so warm, this one was kind of lacking in punch and wasn't as present, even though all the harmonies and everything else was going on, it still didn't cut through as well and it felt weaker. And since it was the chorus, it needed a sound just as powerful, if not more. But it's great if you want to find a different uh, sound for the verses as opposed to the choruses. You just multi vocals. You just copy the vocal phrases onto another track and process it differently. So what is going on here in the vocal section is I started by processing them as a whole with the uh, uh, just the LA two A, which is just uh, should be not compressing that hard actually. Christmas time going round and round Hearing the sleigh bells ring going round and round Yeah, just around uh, 2 dB of compression there. 
and then I high pass filtered it and I cut a little bit of body and I added some uh, 1.6k just to have it cut through the mix in general so let's take these off it's Christmas time going round and round hearing the sleigh bells ring going round and round and the children sing Everything is well on a Christmas carousel. Christmas carousel. And this was also um, the reverb on the vocals is an EMT plate that I started from a preset somewhere and then I just tweaked it until it sounded good. I wanted kind of a big sound while not being super in the way and then I obviously re uh, EQ'd it a lot. I EQ'd a bunch of the highs out and a bunch of the lows as well while adding some presence to the reverb. Um. It's Christmas time going round and All right, let's look at the lead vocals. Let's just do it from the first verse. That's where the least is going on. So what I was doing, as you know, I multi the vocals so that uh, I can control this one separately. I was just going for as warm of a sound as possible. So I had a de on it. Then that went to a Kramer tape. Um, then it went to an EQ. I always seem to have a problem with the, uh, the S sounds. That's why I have a de -esser, but I also kind of cut these areas here. And then I have another kind of analog saturation plugin, but it's just lightly doing anything. Um, it's actually not doing anything on the highs because, uh, I feel like it accentuates the S's and the high frequencies too much. Uh, I just wanted to lightly touch and light, lightly color the sound. And then I have this vocal here, just lightly compressing as well. And then I really like this compressor as well. So I do have two compressors on it. And you could say that this does a little bit of compression too, as well as this but it's a different type of compression. But they are all doing very little. So let's take everything off and just listen to the first verse. You're the author of his story. He's merry, jolly, and cheery. The one who brings good fortune and presents at every turn. All right, let's just start um, activating all these plugins so you'll see the sound change gradually. Author of his story, he's merry, jolly, and cheery. The one who brings good fortune and presents at every turn. You're the author of his story. He's merry, jolly, and cheery. The one who brings good fortune and presents at every turn. You're the author of his story. He's merry, jolly, and cheery. The one who brings good fortune and presents at every turn. So all these things are just contributing tiny bits to the sound. I might actually try to put another compressor on here that has a threshold that's very high so it only compresses the absolute peaks because there are, when I listened to it really loud today I thought that there were some parts where it, it the vocal gets a little bit out of the mix so a good way to do that is to have a compressor 
that's really only working on the peaks. Uh, but these are all just lightly tickling and lightly coloring and adding to the sound. So that's how that sounded. And then the orchestras and the brass and the bells are really just presets of logic. I kind of just liked how it sounded. The only real mixing I did were the reverbs. So these are just, this is just how it sounded. I actually, it sounded a little out of tune, a little too synthy, the bells. So I took the chorus effect a little down. It was a little bit too detune-y. So and then I just EQ'd the reverbs and uh, I didn't even select different reverbs. I just um, EQ'd the tails and uh, fixed fixed kind of the decay and, and all that stuff. So on the uh, full brass, for instance, it's bus 15 and 16, which is uh, this reverb. This is like a wooden booth. I guess they do this in combination with this one which is the large hall. So it was a 6.6 .6 second reverb, but I took it down to 2.5. And then this one is just a 0.23. So I guess this is just used for early reflections or something like that. Um, and then I EQ them down just to take a little bit of the uh, lows there. Nothing too fancy really. Uh, I could probably spend more time on this. So this is one of the string ones. This is kind of the the far end, the far reverb tail. Yeah, so I just, this really just all I did was uh, do some EQing on most of the reverbs. And then when they sounded fine, they just sounded fine. I wasn't too worried about it. And then the only big uh, mix thing that I did with the strings was an automation on the uh, EQ. That you can see in the beginning here because I EQ the, the strings with the, uh, like this but it sounds it sounds nice in the mix when everything's going on but in the intro where it where i wanted to be bigger and fuller and really kind of crescendo into the first verse it doesn't really work it's uh it's not as full as i wanted it to be so i buy i just automated a bypass on the strings here so they are off until the first verse here So with everything else, with the bass, with the guitars and all the vocals, uh, this is the EQ that I ended up with, EQing a little bit of the lows, filtering out the lows, making room for the vocals and a bunch of other stuff and adding some air. That was really the only thing I did. Yeah, and I think that's about it on the mixing things. Um, so what I did at the, end, at the very end, uh, because this is just going to be released as a single, I thought I'd just do the mastering on the bus here. And uh, what I have going on here is my Kramer tape, my uh, EQ, the LA-2A, and my linear phase um, multiband compressor. And then these are all great and all, but the thing is that 
these are actually more important these two here so this is my um frequency analyzer obviously and this is my loudness meter so let's go back to the main here and then i have the holy grail of mastering plugins it's the perception plugin by meter plugs uh and ian shepherd so this is uh the plugin that tells you if i am completely screwing up the mix or if it's actually sounding better with all these plugins or not because there's a complete difference between it actually sounding better and then just sounding louder so let's listen to the mix but without any of these things um you can hear that christmas time going round and round hearing the sleigh bells ring going round and round I put the tape and the children sing everything is well on a christmas carousel and the eq christmas carousel LA to it. It's Christmas time going round and round. Hearing those sleigh bells ring going round and round. And the children sing. Everything is well on a Christmas carousel. And then we balance and check. The Christmas so let's balance and check the level better a little bit better but you notice that this one isn't really doing anything it's it's lightly moving the needle here not really compressing at all this is not compressing at all and this I, I'm I have to admit I'm not very good at using this plugin I just kind of put it on and make it tickle a little bit um but then, then I just check to make sure it's making it sound better, and it usually does. Uh, you, the you know, the big th biggest things are screwing with the attack and release, and moving the bands around to kind of find the better separation of instruments. But in this case, I just put the plug in on and found a nice little balance in the threshold, and uh, just left it there. So let's listen to this uh, unbypassed, or let's listen to it bypassed, and then I'll put it on again. Christmas time going round and round Hearing those sleigh bells ringing Going round and round And the children sing Everything is well On a Christmas carousel Christmas carousel Christmas time going round and round Hearing those sleigh bells ring Going round and round And the children sing Everything is well On a Christmas carousel Christmas carousel Christmas. Okay, so that's about it. Um, I've noticed that it's a little bit loud. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do about that, but to me it sounds pretty good. And uh, I hope you learned something from going through this session with me. Um, please ask me any and all questions you might have. Any critiques on what I could have done better or what the hell was I thinking when I was doing this. Just please let me know. I will receive every critique and go crying in my bedroom when you tell me. No, just kidding. I don't care. But I will take your feedback and I'd love to know what you would have done with the mix or what you would have done differently or what you think uh, 
is a cool trick when it comes to songs like these. So uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And I uh, hope you had a good time. And Merry Christmas from me, Bjorkvin, at Audio Issues and The Long Wait. See you later.